Amen. Join me in prayer as we continue our message series for 2023. Let's pray. Lord, we praise you for being generous in who you are and what you do. We ask for the same attitude to be a reflection of light to those who experience us intentionally. We choose to be the light of this world. We yield to your goodness and pray in the light of Jesus. Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may have a seat. Oh, some of you already took some seats. Well, hello, hello. It is good to be back. And when I say it's good to be back, I mean it is good to be back with you in good old Fort Morgan. And uh, you'll know what I mean here. We're going to share a, a little bit of our Israel trip here. So um, now before I get into uh, the presentation and a little bit of the message here, uh let me um, just introduce myself for the new people that are here. My name is Drake, senior pastor here at Elevating Life Church, and uh, we're uh, knee deep into uh, the year 2023 now, and we're excited uh, where we're going. Now, before jumping into our time together, let me um, just kind of give you a little bit of directions today. It's going to be a little different. We're going to have a message, but at the same time, we're going to have a presentation uh, from myself along with Jesse to share the 10 day trip that we, uh, we just came back from, from Israel. It's a very interesting trip. And so, um, uh, be flexible with us because we did practice. We tried to do the best we can with, uh, with how many tons and tons of photographs, trying to go through them all to say what would be the most impactful and most meaningful. So uh, it's going to be different today just for that reason, because many of you have, have approached us and asked us to share that, and we thought this would be a good opportunity. So with that, Jesse, I'm going to ask you to come up, uh, and we're going to get right into uh, uh, our presentation time. Now, recall our message today uh, is uh, let your light shine. Of course, the you know religious people are stingy. Uh, spiritual people are generous. Now, oftentimes we want to think a, about money perhaps or stuff, uh, but what we mean today is generous, or excuse me, religious people who are stingy are stingy with their love. Okay, And a true Christian, in the sense of the great commandment, the great commission, they are generous with their love. And we can't mix the two because we think giving something or giving more money is what generous generosity is all about. You've missed the mark. It's about being more caring and more responsible in the faith. About being more respectful, maybe to those who are like you, but also those who are not like you. And also, it's so important that we understand uh, what it means to know one another. And what it means to be engaged. What it means to be committed. What it means... So, we're talking about generosity. We're talking about God's love. And so with that, uh, we thought the best way to let our light shine and that love, uh, love life to shine with you is to present uh, this, this presentation. Now, as we're going into the presentation, here's our main verse for the, today. Matthew 5, 14, 16 says this, let your light, your love, let your light of the, uh, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden, neither do uh, people light a lamp and put it under a bushel or a bowl. Went to the song there. Instead, they put it on, on its stand and gives light to everyone in the house. Now, understand how important that is in the church. Isn't it difficult sometimes to give light in the house? I mean, if we think about our own relationships in our own homes, how often do we not treat ourselves with light? We're actually a little bit more not light. Not only there, we come to the house, the church. Most of us know how to uh, present the light in the sense of a nice little suit and tie and a smile. But it, we got to make sure that we're doing everything that we do out of love or we miss the mark. And so uh, in the same way, let your light shine before others. That's human beings, folks. Not, you can't be picky there. That they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Of course, God is love. That is glorifying your Father in heaven by truly being a true love, a loving person standing in love. Too many people fall in love. Let's stand in God's love 
so that we can be people who are not stingy, but people who are truly uh, generous. So here we are now. We're back from our trip. And so uh, with this kind of thought, uh, let's share the 10 days uh, that uh, we uh, took to, to really visit the Holy Land. So, of course, on day one, uh, we, de- we departed, of course. And uh, this was an interesting moment for us. Of course, we went to the Denver airport uh, and we des- uh, decided to, oh, not decided, we, we got through the security and then I'll turn it over to you. What happened from there, there Jesse? Yeah, so from Denver, <clears throat> we had a four hour, four hour and some change flight to uh, Toronto. Was it Toronto? Yeah, it was Toronto. Um, and there we had a layover. And um, from there, it was an 11, 12 hour flight to Israel. I'd never been on anything longer than a five-hour. It, it was 12 hours and three 12 minutes. Hours. Okay, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so I had never been anything, anything longer than the first flight. You know, I've gone to Cancun a few times, but never 12 hours and three minutes on a plane. Yeah, can you imagine in a tube, 30,000 feet up in the air for 13 yeah. hours nearly? And I'm not a skinny guy. Yeah. This, this chair is a pretty tight. I had to sit on one side and Jesse had to sit on the other side and make sure we balanced yeah. things out. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was a great it was a great trip. But uh, as you know, um, there was a lot of people on the trip and going there. A lot of uh, Orthodox Jews. We'll see. We have a little picture here. A lot of different religions, but a lot of uh, Orthodox Jews, which, you know, we're kind of talking about religious people. Without a shadow of a doubt, they're generous, they're kind and they're loving to their people. But what we found out, nothing wrong with that. We tend to do that too. Uh, but I tell you what, um, did you feel the love? Yeah, it was definitely a <laughs> one up, one down type of mentality yeah. there. Um, but it was an experience for me. I'd never seen a, a, yeah. an Orthodox Jew or seen the apparel up close and personal. So it was, it was, a, it was a good experience for me. I learned. And I then of course you had something. Christians on the flight too, yes. right? We're the ones, you know, are singing and yeah. having a joyful time all the time. But you know what? No matter how difficult the flight, it was, it was a tough two days. It took us two days to get there. No matter what though, we knew the next day that we, we would be walking where Jesus walked. And so uh, that was day one, right? Uh, yes. Exciting, um, depressing, all at the same time. And then uh, we got, we did arrive in Israel. That's day two. So if you, you're planning on going to Israel, just know it takes you two days to get there. And you got to have a lot of patience and um, making sure that you, you know, just have, have a, a mindset that you're going, this is going to be a long two days. All right, day two. Day two, uh, we arrived in Tel Aviv, and then it was an, uh, about an hour bus drive to our hotel. Now, keep in mind that Israel, uh, where we were at, it's nine hours ahead of the time right now. So when you guys were sleeping, we were awake. And when we, you were awake, we were sleeping. <laughs> yeah, and this is Tel Aviv. There's the uh, Mediterranean Sea. Yeah. You can see we're roughing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is from the five-star uh, hotel here. This is the shot that we actually had from our balcony. So if you're thinking we were going to be in Abraham's tent sleeping and stuff like that, yeah. it just wasn't reality. It, where it was. We're going to get to yeah, that. So, there, so there's, our, there's our first uh, night I Gave this shot to Sherry. One, one thing I do want to share with you is we walk into that room and there's two twin beds <laughs> butt up to each other. So I'm like, man, we'll get to know Drake on another level. <laughs> <laughs> I said left or right side. I, I, you know. <laughs> it was interesting, yeah, because they don't, they, they don't have separate beds there. Yeah. Uh, and so, we, well, we, we were very creative yeah, we were with that. Right. We won't go there today. <laughs> So uh, there, yeah. Uh, then, of course, we met our uh, tour guide. His name is Mickey, uh, Christian Jew, uh, me- Messianic Jewish uh, person. He knows Jesus, and man, what a tremendous uh, person! Uh, he, uh, we were talking about the light. He, he had the love deep down inside him. You sensed that. You knew that when you met him. Uh, so caring and responsible. He respected everybody, and, and we know this. He wanted to get to know you. He knew his stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he made the trip. Yes, uh, I could not imagine this trip without a, a tour guide. And so this is Mickey, his wife. Uh, Minnie was not there. So, <laughs> and that was his joke, not mine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that was Mickey. He was with us all from that night all the way till we got to the airport on the tenth day. Yes. And so that. Uh, and then uh, I got to say something here, Jesse. Mm-hmm. Uh, Delilah came up to me just earlier and said, "Look like you lost a couple of pounds." <laughs> 
And I, I want to say because I'm disciplined and I'm losing all this weight and all this stuff, it was because I was in Israel for 10 days and I was eating food like this. This is our first meal. Uh, Jesse, you might have liked it, but it was a challenge for me. Uh, I did like the hummus. I think this was my bowl. And I just ate the hummus. That's all I ate. Yeah. Uh, but this was uh, the traditional side dishes, uh, typically chicken or fish. But this was it every night, every meal. Uh, so uh, there you have it. You got any thoughts yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. The first, okay. first day that we were there, it was just to, for us to kind of get relaxed and be prepared for what was to come because it, it was intense. Okay, that's, uh, we're in Israel now. Mm -hmm. So off to day three. Go ahead, Jess. Yeah, so day three, uh, the first stop, Heather, was, um, or we, well, so we were welcomed with this awesome new bus, this bus, right? It was totally different than our experience in the Dominican Republic where we were jam-packed. <laughs> yeah, there was actual little, donkeys yeah. there, I think. And, uh, <laughs> we got, so we were roughing it here. We had Wi-Fi, we had AC. I mean, man, we had a lot more space in that bus than we did in our airplane, right? <laughs> walking where Jesus is walking. walking. Yep. <laughs> this is our bus. It was it, it was remarkable, yes. comfortable, and uh, and you had to fight for your seat. Oh, we have to say this because there was three denominations. Oh, there yeah. were there were uh, we Lutheran, Catholic, and Baptist. Guess where the Baptists sat? Ten of us, back of the bus. <laughs> Amen. There you go. We were represented. That's so true sure. too. When we protected it, yeah. no Lutherans yeah. were there, <laughs> <laughs> and Catholics yeah. were just confused. But I didn't say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Our first stop was Caesarea, and Caesarea by the sea. This is where um, Herod, King Herod the Great, we all know him as the baby killer. Right when uh, Jesus was born, he went out and uh, he found out that there was a king that was going to be born, and he wanted to kill all the. All the kids. So this is this is the Herod that that built this this um, fortress, and it's by the sea, by the Mediterranean Sea. It was a harbor where the Roman government would come and uh, and exchange and, and travel. So uh, this is you can find that in Acts chapter ten, also where Peter led Cornelius and his family to Jesus. And here's some of the rooms that uh, with uh, this experience that we had amphitheater. Of course, mm -hmm. you know nothing's uh, you know it's it's all ruins, but uh, you can kind of sense. Uh, the community, the town that this was, that Herod the Great built up uh, right on the Mediterranean Sea. So that's an amphitheater, and you get some uh, some shots of the uh, pillars. You got if you know your Bible, you go and you're you're trying to imagine this. And oftentimes it was quite interesting because when you're trying to imagine it and you you know your Bible, well, you get there and you're like, that's nothing what I thought, mm, no. you know. And so, uh, go ahead, some just some other pictures. We got a lot of pictures, so we'll yeah. get through there. There. They actually built structures in the sea, like they, the architecture, and the engineering involved in this. And it, man, it's it's incredible. And here's the harbor. Yeah, uh, the harbor. And there you go. There's the aqueduct. That aqueduct is still on the beach. People go out, have fun. Um, there's a lot of people out there, but it's really cool because you see that aqueduct that carried their fresh water to that fortress. Yeah, and how far was it? That was quite a distance. Yeah, it was a pretty good way. Uh, from here to Jerusalem, mm -hmm. which is not, you know, in the Bible, it's this far. Uh, but in reality, it's like a two-hour drive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's quite uh, quite uh, interesting. So uh, I don't think that was active. No, no, I don't think so. Now, where we kind of see this in the Bible, we wanted to connect some scripture to all of this. Matthew 2, 16. Oh, wait a sec. Let's, we can't miss my picture. Yeah. Um, Drake. There's, Drake. The, there's the Baptist that sat in the back. Drake knew we were going to the beach and he wanted to wear one of his shirts. Yeah. <laughs> Hurry up, take the picture. Look at, you, look at you back there, right? Here it is in the Bible. When Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, uh, he was furious and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem. So this was the community uh, where Herod gave that, uh, that commission to kill all, every, all, every boy under two in vicinity where two years old and under in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. So there you go. Um, it is what it is, right? It was quite interesting. Mm -hmm. All right. So all right. Ne oh, go ahead, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, next was Mount Carmel. And this is where, <clears throat> where Elijah called God's fire to come down and demonstrate his power against the prophets of Baal in Kings 1 eight, Kings 18. So we've got some pictures of a statue kind of Mark, Mount Carmel where uh, mm -hmm. Elijah, 450 prophets, mm -hmm. uh, and Baal. This was uh, where all this happened. Yep. By the way, if you have a question, raise your hand. This is informal. So if you got any thoughts or comments, please share them with us or a question. Definitely. 
So the, that mount overviewed kind of the whole northern part of uh, Israel, right? And mm -hmm. then you think about reading, you know, when Moses, when, uh, Moses was guiding these people to the land of milk and honey, that, I mean, it definitely represents that. I mean, these, the farmland there can grow anything. I mean, it's amazing. It's green, the northern part. It's Here's beautiful. your olive trees. Mm -hmm. Y'all read about in the Bible. Mm -hmm. They're all there. Thousands of olive trees and date trees. You know, they don't have regular honey there. They have and date dates. Honey. Yeah, they, they get the, uh, that was the sugar from the dates and the syrup and make the honey. After eight, ten good. of them, I needed an insulin yeah. shot. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> They're so good, right? You're like, this is good. Yeah, be careful because <laughs> there's a lot of sugar in there. Our next, uh, we, so we kind of are traveling from, uh, you know, Mount Carmel and going through all this. We get to Megiddo. Now I'm going to pause here. Uh, anybody familiar with Megiddo? We're, uh, you're, I promise you, when we give you the actual language we use in English, you know where this is. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and take so, it over. Uh, this is, we visited the ancient ruins of Megiddo, which is translated to Armageddon. And this is where King Josiah fell to the Egyptian pharaoh Nek 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 Nekor in, uh, when, I think, Second or First Chronicles is what the verse was going to show. Oh, Second Chronicles yeah. 35 to uh, 22. Yep. yep. So here it is, from Megiddo to Armageddon. So if you read, uh, you read Megiddo, if, if you're reading the Old Testament, it's mentioned not often, about four or five times, but in the New Testament, when you read Armageddon, it's talking about this place, mm -hmm. uh, be it the many different battles that happened as we experience in the Old Testament, but also the place where Armageddon in the battle of the end of time, this is where it's going to happen. And it was so fascinating because you actually were standing on this, uh, this ridge, this mountain, and you can see all of Israel. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of sense in the valley all the different battles that happened in Old Testament to where that is going to be the reality in the sense of end times where that's all uh, going to happen in Christian tradition. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, it's just, again, a lot of ruins. Isn't it, This is the place that uh, there was an escape route or some, we went down yeah. some well, stairs. It was the old spring that, that supplied the water because a lot of places, these fortresses were built where there was water nearby. And this one was built on a hilltop and there was a spring that dried out that we actually walked I think 200 steps. It was like 100 and something going down, and I'm glad it was only 80 coming up because it was a long, long walk. Yeah, if you've worked at Cargill, and I see some of you that do work at Cargill, you know the stairs that go up? Yeah, and you complain about that? Don't complain about it anymore. <laughs> it's, it's 100 of those. It was crazy going down. And so, and it was small. Again, yes. us small Americans trying exactly. to get down. It was, it was crazy. There you go. There's a good shot of the valley. That's Mount Deborah. You know Deborah in the Bible. Uh, again, uh, to pay tribute to her in, in the leadership of women. Uh, I think we've misunderstood the place of women in history. Because when you go to Israel, uh, the women are, are equally yoked, just as we see Adam and Eve. And they're coming together, and they really, really give her a great tribute. Uh, and it's called Mount Deborah because of everything that happened in in her experience in the Old Testament. Yep. So the last place we visited. Oh, so we got some more showing there. Oh yeah. yeah. I think we have two thousand six hundred and eight slides, right? Yeah. So uh, right. just to kind of connect us in scripture, right here, Second Chronicles thirty five. Uh, Josiah, however, this we're just trying to get you there, would not turn away from him, but disguised himself to engage him in battle. Uh, he would not listen to what? Nacho? No. <laughs> Nico. <laughs> Nico. <laughs> Nico had said it at God's, I'm just kidding. Command by, went to uh, fight. I just wanted to put this in here. Went to fight him on the plain of Megiddo. Yeah. Same place again. You see that in the Old Testament. So from Armageddon, if you will, uh, we went on to, guess where? Nazareth. 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 So Nazareth, uh, what we did was <clears throat> they took us, <clears throat> they took us to a reenactment of the first century Nazareth, and we saw uh, a kind of a replica. It really reminded me of what we do here um, with our uh, nativity scene. Yeah, Bethlehem. Right? Oh, not Bethlehem. Yeah, Bethlehem, rather. <laughs> yeah, so it's a bunch of actors, live animals, and they really want you to get this feel of what it was like back in Jesus' day. Um, 
There are some pictures. It kind of looks like pictures. our live nativity. Yeah. Look. Yeah, they probably have no someone like Deb bringing their animals. <laughs> <laughs> and there's live actors, clothing, everything. Yeah, great. They show people farming, people engaging, connecting. Um, saw first olive tree there. Nice. I didn't ever think that that's what they looked like, but it was very nice. Beautiful tree. So. And this is a village, again, that they recreated because Nazareth now, if you look at it, a bunch of buildings, it's it, it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> So here you go. Talk about this a little bit. This is yeah. interesting. So this is an olive press. And um, the, the guide there gave us an in-depth explanation of the process of what it, what it takes to extrude the oil from the olives. And there's, there's three different uh, classes, levels of you know, quality that, that they extrude from the first, second, and third press. And it was really interesting. I don't want to spoil everything. I want some of y'all to go and experience this. <laughs> So yeah, you should have put that with the donkey. <laughs> that was almost perfect timing. <laughs> so yeah, there and then here's we have the synagogue. Oh uh, yeah, this this was really cool. Um, just a, a replica of what the synagogue was like back in Jesus' time, and and being in Nazareth, everyone, you know, for those of you who know, this is where Jesus um, read from the scrolls and and fulfilled the prophecy. Yeah, you can imagine, this was actual the actual synagogue. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of imagine Jesus, uh, his boyhood home was Nazareth, mm -hmm. and this was one of the last places that, uh, you know, he, he was um, connected with Nazareth. And you can see Jesus, uh, if you can see in the back there, there's a little container, that's where the scroll set. So he went back there and picked up the scroll and read from the book of Isaiah, or the scroll of Isaiah, mm -hmm. uh, proclaiming who he was, and then, of course, that's where he departed the synagogue saying, you, you know, it's hard to be, you can't, it's almost impossible to be a prophet in your own backyard. Mm -hmm. and, he, and he left there and began his ministry. Yes. Uh, and so, you, and you know what? It was, you're thinking the synagogue, right? You're like, oh, and you get in and you're like, this is the size of my master bedroom. <laughs> but you can kind of see the stairs and people would sit around there. Uh, but uh, yeah, definitely, uh, that was definitely one of the greatest experiences I had, holy moment where you can actually visualize Jesus, you know, preaching and uh, proclaiming to be the Christ, yeah. the Messiah. And synagogues were not only used for a place to worship, but also for the community to come together yeah. and discuss any important things. Now, gonna, like that. now, so were women allowed in the synagogue or not? Who says no? Who says yes? The yes is when? Yes. Okay. It was not a society like you're thinking. Okay? And we, we've been duped with some tradition and some beliefs. Um, so here's the scripture that connects us with this particular uh, photograph. We, he went to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, which is a Saturday, he went into the synagogue and was as it was his custom. He stood up now to read and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was uh, handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written. Is that all we have? Yeah. So there's a scroll, and he read from Isaiah. So there you go, Nazareth. And this is where we ended up, our second hotel. Yeah. So after Roughing the, it. After the, uh, <clears throat> the tour, that, that we ended our tour with traveling to the Sea of Galilee from Nazareth. It was about another hour drive. And uh, man, definitely not what I expected. You think of a sea, the sea, in my mind, and it was going to be this huge body of water. It's, it's actually just a lake. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, this is a pretty good sized lake, though. Yeah, yeah. this is where uh, two weeks ago you saw us film, if you were here, uh, some video. This is where we were, just mm -hmm. not too far from here. Mm -hmm. So the Sea of Galilee. Where's my father in law, Rich? It's where we want to go fishing. <laughs> you got some good fishing there. <laughs> In fact, uh, we we're kind of joking around, going, "Can we take tomorrow off because we can <laughs> we can do, do some, some serious fishing?" fishing. Yeah, yeah. So, next picture, we'll have to get through these. We're kind of yeah. out of time. All right. So, to, um, day four. Day four was pretty intense. One of our busiest days. Um, the first thing we went to visit was was Dan. Dan is often referred to as the northern border of Israel during the Old Testament history, Second Samuel. Uh, as Israelites became attracted to fertility cults, Dan be became the center of Baal worship. That's one of the lost tribes. So we've got some pictures of that. Mr. Mickey again. Oh, I got we got to yeah. pause here. Yeah. I got to pause oh, here. Man. So there's Mickey, our tour guide. <laughs> Notice in the picture you see Jesse. 
Y'all see him? He's over. Let's see, he'll be over to the right here. There you go. Now, I don't know if you know this, but this is a highlight of my, my uh, trip. Uh, Jesse lost his phone. The day before. The day yeah. before. So this is day three. He lost his phone. Everybody was going berserk. He didn't care. Uh, but Mickey here, if you notice, he has something around his neck. It's called a Vesper. And this is a communication system that you put around your neck and you put an earphone. You hear the tour guide, right? Uh, and just like church, one of the greatest fears is, you know, pastor walking to the bathroom and you guys not turning off the mic and hearing that. Well, that was a similar situation here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank God it wasn't me, but it was Jesse because uh, the uh, Mickey got a phone call, all right? And he's having a phone call. It's still on. Oh, they found, where did they find the, to- uh, where they find your uh, phone? In the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> How long do you think it was there? Like two yeah. or three days, really? Or two or three hours? <laughs> Guarantee it, uh, the phone is probably... But anyway, <laughs> literally, he's having this conversation. Then he has a conversation with Jesse. Everybody, I mean everybody. Okay? Yeah. That was a highlight of my tour. Oh, yeah. I mean, that was sure good. Was, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get your phone? You never got your phone back. No, I didn't. You didn't want it back. I wasn't going You didn't want it back after that. <laughs> Yeah. And some of that food that we saw earlier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so All right. This was Dan. Our, this was our first time. Whoop, we got to stay separated. We've been so close together. We yeah. want to keep getting closer and closer. So yeah. So the, this is the first time we got to actually see the River Jordan, um, and then we got to take a hike up to together. This is actually our group, Have our our group there. of uh, thirty plus people that were in one bus, and. Um, we had two buses. Yeah. Well, yeah, our bus. Yeah. But there was two. There was a total of over 70 people. So they divided us in two groups. And this was our group that we, we spent the whole trip with. The other group was uh, Love Your Enemy. Uh, that was yeah. the whole mentality. Exactly. So, yeah, that's, uh, there's 10 of us there from uh, the region. Yep. Beautiful picture. You look good. Yeah, thanks. You too. And then this kind of represents, uh, this was the northernmost part of the site in, uh, where the old city of Danlet sits. And this is where, where they believe that the, uh, the uh, statue of the bell, that golden calf that they worshipped, and that, that metal cage kind of represents kind of where that stood. Yeah, again, you can kind of see all the ruins and mm-hmm. stuff, so you really have to, uh, you know, either Mickey would direct us to Scripture mm-hmm. or you just have to imagine it if you know uh, the Bible. It, again, it's not like we walk and say, oh, there it is. Uh, so a lot of ruins. Uh, Dan, the tribe of Dan doesn't even exist anymore. Mm-mm. Uh, and so it's the, the northern uh, part of Israel. And if you see here uh, in the back, on the background there, that's Lebanon. Yeah, that chain okay. right there. That's the border. So we're north, way up there. Way north. Uh, and so that's Dan. Then from Dan, we went to uh, Caesarea Philippi. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, we did travel over the Jordan, but here we go. Uh, Philippi. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and show these pictures real quick, and we'll explain them as we go because yep. we're running out of time here. Yep. Uh, Peter Mm -hmm. uh, and Jesus. You remember that conversation where Jesus was saying, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church and the gates of Hades will not stand up against it. This is the actual gate or the entrance to hell that Jesus was referring to in there with Peter. And so you see this entrance and you see these little different areas that they placed their little gods, what they would call gods. And Jesus was like, this isn't what it's about. This is not how you're, you're going to enter uh, the kingdom. And so with that, you can make whatever that is. Yeah, oh, this, yeah this, just gonna sh- this just shows what it used to look like back in the day. Kind of some imagery. Give you a perspective. Yeah, if you that. see that building, it's actually yeah. sitting over that cave that we saw. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you can imagine all the people going up there to worship their gods and or whatever that would be. Uh, and, you know, of course, it was a community. Uh, but it was a community of it was like pagans and, and different worship. It, it, you could kind of imagine Jesus speaking to Peter, going, "That's the gates of hell, and that is not going to stand up against what we know as Christ, Christianity today." And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Matthew sixteen yes. eighteen. Mm-hmm. Next is uh, Capernaum. This was uh, one of the towns that. That Jesus lived, and and some believe this is where he started his ministry. Came down from Nazareth, came to Capernaum, and that's where he began to preach. Uh, the kingdom of heaven is within hands reach. Yeah, up north here, uh, this is the community he did most of his uh, ministry. And if you uh, read your Bible, 
Uh, it's a small community, but uh, this is where he lived, and he lived with Peter, and we'll see some of that. You can see some, you know, Jesus homeless there. There's a statue of Jesus just worshiping. And, and then, uh, there you go. Ruins again. This is the, the Campernum, as you read it in the, in the scripture. Also where Peter lived. Peter, yep. Yep, Peter. So this is a synagogue right here. Are the ruins left over from that. And then, here's a little piece of information that kind of goes uh, in descriptive about how the, the town laid out and where they believe Peter lived. And then they built a uh, building over that. This is actually a Catholic church um, with the floor has glass to see the ruins under it. Yeah, this is the Peter's house. Mm -hmm. Peter's house. So you go in there and, and of course they're worshiping it. But yep. uh, they pay tribute and worship there with that chapel. Yes. Looks like a big spaceship. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Here you go. Magdala. 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 Mary. Magdala. This is a little community. This is where she came from. Uh, I threw a couple of uh, pictures in there. You can see it where she uh, she was a leader there, influencer. And this was just a small area that uh, we visited with the bath, the different bathhouses and uh, the little community. So thoughts there? Uh, they built that hotel. Um, and then when they were doing the excavation, they actually found those ruins. So um, yeah, now it's two. You can stay there and see the ruins. <laughs> All right, from there, back to the Sea of Galilee, and uh, we went to lunch first. Hey, lunch again. It looks yeah. familiar, right? Except this time we got fishes with heads on them. <laughs> Which is not new to me. I do that. I get that at the local restaurant here down the street. So, yeah, it's like home. <laughs> I got the Happy Meal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, of course, there's the boat. Uh, we were on, this is uh, what we were, we're we were traveling one place, of course. Yeah. Uh, but this is where we filmed the, the video right before we got on this, this uh, boat. Yeah. We did some worshiping, uh, singing, uh, and uh, they showed us how they fished back then, which was quite interesting. Through the nets, the nets. Yep. Through the nets yeah, and everything. Hard work. This was a highlight, of, of I think, for me for the trip, because this is where Jesus calmed the storm. This is where uh, he walked on water, and this is where he performed miracles all around the Sea of Galilee. So it, it was, it was this was my... I like. There's Pastor Kim, if you know Pastor Kim and Drew. I talk about Drew mm -hmm. often, so there you go. And then off, uh, we went to a museum. Uh, this is a, a boat that they did find in that area. They don't know if this was the, that particular boat where Jesus was riding in the back and the disciples were, you know, he was sleeping in the disciples. But it would be a similar same size boat, mm -hmm. uh, which if you're in the middle of the lake or in the sea there, uh, this would be quite radical with 13 people. <laughs> in it, right, with the storm. Now, and it's not that big of a lake, but my father-in-law is here. We've been on a lake similar size. When that wind and rain comes up, it gets a little sketchy. Three, four foot waves. And could you imagine being in that and Jesus just kicking back like nothing's going on, of course. Uh, and so this was uh, uh, one they found and they tried to put it together. That's quite the story, too. Mm -hmm. Day five. Day five. Here we go. We're only halfway through this, guys. Yep. <laughs> so, so day five, uh, first place we visited that morning, and it was early, is we got to go to the Jordan River Baptism site. And this is, this is more developed towards tourists. They built a nice facility to, uh, to have that, that experience of baptism and, and that, that, um, that significance of what it means to, to be a... To, yeah, this, you know, this is not where Jesus got yeah, baptized. this is not where Jesus was This is where the Americans get baptized. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. <laughs> Uh, here's Drew. Uh, he's baptizing you. Go in there. Brian's a pastor, so they went down there and decided to do this. Funny part about this, look how big Brian is. Because uh, Drew's not a real small guy. The funny part is they did the baptism and they both lost their footing and they actually started drifting. <laughs> <laughs> See ya! <laughs> it, was, it was quite comical. Because right where they're at, if you step right back, it goes to like eight, nine feet. And yeah. It was, it was pretty comical, but uh, they came out of it pretty good. Yeah, still wet. All right, Beth Sean. Yep, Beth Sean. Beth Sean is, is one of the, uh, the Decapolis, and it's just a, um, ten, city, 10 pagan cities, a group of 10 pagan cities. Uh, so one of the things that, you'll, uh, um, that is, is in Scripture on this one is this is where they uh, hung uh, Saul and his sons after they killed him. Yeah, if you know that story. Wall, Beth Shia, yeah. yeah. So this is the ruins. This one was probably one of the bigger sites that we visited that had a lot of stuff to look at. And I walked all the way up there. That was a 
That was a walk, I'll tell you that. I'm taking that picture. I'm trying to get the picture of Jesse walking up the <laughs> stairs there because I... I've been to Cargill, and I did not want to do that again. Uh -huh. uh, so uh, there's, yeah, that you guys, I don't know, sixteen thousand feet I don't yeah, know, steps on your steps, watch, or whatever know. is crazy. But there's a view from the top. That that was amazing. Because up here on the uh, top left, that's the amphitheater. Over here on the top right was the Roman bathhouse, and then over here, this is kind of where they came together and did all kinds of inappropriate things. But anyway, um, Main Street right there is where they walked. And yeah, there's a lot to see, a lot to see there. A lot of stuff happened here in the Old Testament. So and again, King, uh, King Saul and his sons, this mm -hmm. is where they put them on display. So it was quite uh, remarkable. All right. So next. <clears throat> Dead Sea. Dead Sea. Uh, we drove down, uh, be south. Mm -hmm. And there's the Dead Sea from the So from these the are bus. the, yep, the picture of the caves. There's a Dead Sea. And then we went to the Qumran Oh, no, we ended the day. I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah. We ended the day at the hotel. Again, we're roughing it again. There's our hotel again, yep. third hotel, or second hotel, third hotel. We're roughing it. Uh, so. Yeah, we decided to uh, use the pool rather than the Dead Sea. Mm -hmm. You can see why. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then we, we got to day six. Yes. Day six, we'll get through this here. Oh, man, there's some good stuff going on. Yep. Uh, this was your highlight. Go ahead. Okay, so En Gedi, this is one of the places that, uh, that David sought refuge from Saul. So he probably hid in one of these caves when Saul was trying to kill him. And this is my first experience of seeing an actual oasis. We read about it, uh, we see them on TV, but to actually be in the middle of a desert and experience, show them this next video right here. Look at that. I was not expecting to see that in the middle of a desert. Yeah, it was crazy because you can imagine yourself just walking in the desert and you need water or whatever, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden this appears. You think maybe it's a hallucination or something, but you get there going, holy cow. It is a beautiful oasis. This is where King David again, uh, probably where he is. He, when Saul came after me, went up in the cave. That's where King Saul relieved himself. You remember that's in the Bible. Uh, he was back there. He could have taken his life, but he decided not to. But this is where King David was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Crazy. All right, next C. Uh, Dead Sea Scroll discoveries. This is not where we got to see the actual Dead Sea Scrolls. This is just where they were discovered in the Qumran mountain range. So this is a little boy walking his goat, walked into a cave, found some clay jars, and lo and behold, Dead Sea Scroll. Yeah. Yeah, and watery, I guess. Yeah. So you can see, yeah, that little cave. Beth, then we went to Bethlehem. Here we go. This is what Bethlehem looks like. So think of our live nativity scene, and da da. Yeah, looks nothing like it. <laughs> so there's there's a church built over the nativity that, um, and they think you know that Jesus was born here. We're able to see the spot marked where actual where they believe the actual spot uh, that Jesus was, and it's marked with a gold star or a silver star. I'm sorry. And here you get there's a bottleneck, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody's killing each other trying oh, to get yeah. in there. That's miserable. But you you can see they're getting into this place, which is just a small place, and this is. One possible location of the yep. birth of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yep. There you go. Uh, I think this is more of a Catholic tradition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's three different denominations that share that church. Man, and all intense. three of them is like, no, it's here. No, it's here. No, it's over here. Come see ours. And it's, like, yeah. it's, it's a mess. This was not fun for me to be honest. Yeah. Is, just imagine having a Platte Valley Elevating Life Church and the Church of Christ all sharing one building. And, and they get their turn to talk but about But they dogs. all have their different rules and all have their different <laughs> <That's great>. terms. <laughs> Variety. There you go. Yeah. There you go. From there, we went to Jerusalem. Of course, this uh, we spent four days here. Mm -hmm. uh, again, uh, there's our tent we stayed in, roughing it. Uh, yes. Yeah. It's pretty tough, huh? Yeah. <laughs> no, we got another surprise. No, oh, yeah. You got to tell them the story yeah, here. Because here <laughs> we walked into our room and we're expecting those twin beds, but there was only one queen. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's only one. <laughs> so there, I was like, okay, Drake, this, this is getting a little too intimate for me. I'm no, no, no. no. This, this, this is how it happened. We both looked at it. He looked at me and goes, oh, no way. <laughs> he, he ran back to the <laughs> front desk again. We got another room. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't as nice, but yeah. yeah but well, we it was beds. nice because had yeah. two beds and... Uh, for some reason, I, we had that ick feeling, so yeah. we made sure the beds were as far apart as we could. <laughs> so, uh, go ahead. Yeah. So, there's it. Now we're day seven. Here, so, 
here comes the craziness. Yeah, so this day, I mean, we were excited here because this is the last part of our trip and we were actually didn't have to move a hotel again. So yeah. here's a picture from Mount Olive overlooking the old town of Jerusalem and you can see the dome on the rock. So that and was pretty. This is where the temple, but now Muslims mm -hmm. have it. Uh, this is where the temple set uh, in its uh, original setting. And so, yeah. There's, oh, you guys know Perry. Mm -hmm. Yep, there's Drake with his yarmulke. Oh, I got my yarmulke. Yep. Yeah, right here. Yep. Here we go. That you could, this is the Wailing Wall. Yep. So we had to have this on. I'm not quite sure why. But uh, you can see all the people with the Wailing Wall. Uh, even that day, you can sense there are people there that spent their entire, probably, fortune life just to get there to touch that wall. Yes. The Wailing Wall. Uh, you know, they, and they believed with all of their heart, soul, or committed to it. They're engaged, and it was it was interesting. It was mm -hmm. it was challenging too because, um, yes, that's a rock. It's made out of rock, but we know the truth that Jesus. We want to touch Jesus. That spent everything we have because of some resource or literal thing. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, that was it was kind of hard to, yeah. to to kind of be be part of that. Yeah, and they and it's not they don't close that. People are praying there day and night all day. And men pray on one yeah. side, women on the oh, other yes, side. Yes, uh, it was just like yeah. very disturbing. Yeah. And here we go, another another room in the, in the uh, in the buildings there. And uh, there's sometimes not enough room, so they come in here and they pray, praying there mm -hmm. against the wall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Abraham's tent. So here we went out to the Ju the Judea hills where we where Abraham came, lived, yeah, and had lunch out there. So. Uh, they took camels to ride up to the tent, yep. and then they had a great lunch. Put the up tent there. there, bring it up. There you go. There's the tent where we rode the camels. Well, you were supposed to. I wasn't getting on a camel, mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I walked. <laughs> and this gentleman here, he gave probably one of the best messages I've I've heard on hospitality and fellowship, because uh, we gathered here. It was a couple hours, uh, and he just talked about how do you connect with somebody? How do you link with somebody? What does that look like? And the tradition is this. You don't really get to know somebody until you're face-to-face -face, uh, having a meal with them and talking and connecting. That's what true fellowship is. Uh, and, and getting to share life in a way. And he did it so well. I'm like, that's exactly right. Uh, because oftentimes we just come, uh, we just come and go, and we really don't connect with one another until uh, that true hospitality or fellowship comes. And boy, that was, that was a very meaningful, significant yes. moment. And so, yeah. yeah, we did all that. Some people are sitting uh, on chairs. Others are sitting just down on cushions. Yep. And we ended our day with that. Yep. Ended the yep. day. Day and, eight. Mm -hmm. And in the evenings, I would go off <laughs> the agenda, and I'd go out and walk around the old town at night. So I got to meet new people. It's not dangerous or anything, but we got to, me and a couple other guys went out, got to experience. Not Pastor Drake. Uh, no, not Pastor Drake. So. Pastor Drake is 15 <laughs> Pastor Drake years older. And he's just like, I'm, I got 26,000 steps already. I ain't going. Because <laughs> tomorrow we got to go where Jesus walked. Here we yes. go. Uh, the next day. So we see some of this. Yep. So we visited two possible sites that day <laughs> uh, where Jesus' crucifixion, burial, and resurrection. Uh, this one is a church built over... <laughs> Built in the 4th century A.D., the Holy Scepter Church was built by Helena, uh, mother of Constantine. So this is a more traditional site that is believed to where Jesus was uh, buried. You go through this. They yeah, this is the church. burial site, but eh, mm -hmm. this is not probably, probably not in my thoughts. Go ahead. Yep. Uh, the next this one, is where we, the next place is where it would be more likely the tomb of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So the garden tomb, this was discovered in the 1800s, super cool. Uh, Garden Tomb gives you a picture of the place where Jesus was crucified, buried, and what it would have looked like. So this is us waiting in line to get into the tomb. There's a picture inside the tomb, very small, maybe 10 by 10, 12 by 12. I can't, it's very small. There you Coming go. Out. Coming out. There's Drake coming out. They did not make uh, the tomb for America. No. <laughs> Mount Olive. Mount Olive Across was, yeah, was a, was a, Another site that we visited that day, and this is where, again, Jesus went up to pray, also where he was arrested. Can I imagine that, Jesus going into the garden? There and there's go. the view of Mount Olive. Very busy town there. There's Jerusalem. And day nine, final day. Here we go. We're wrapping yeah. things up. Final day. Um, to finish up this trip, we visited a bunch of museums. 
visited the Israel Museum. There's a picture from the actual Holocaust Museum. So um, a lot. That was probably the, the biggest museum. They had so much. Um, they had so many things. They had the old rail cars that they were transported in. Had a lot of clothing, documents, all kinds of stuff in there. Yeah, and to see, you know, they, you know, Israel has always gone through persecution, mm -hmm. suffering, and of course we can all recall World War II with the Nazis and stuff. It was a, a you know, heart-breaking uh, story, but at the same time, mm -hmm. uh, how they are resistant and coming back, and uh, so yeah, that was a that was a challenging day with just with the different museums and. Mm -hmm. But uh, you definitely got the sense of, okay, uh, these are resilient people, mm -hmm. without a shadow of a doubt. And of course, uh, we went to Mount Zion, uh, Friends of Mount Zion. That was... Uh, another uh, museum was, if we didn't get any pictures of that, but that yeah. was a very modern um, museum. Yeah. yeah. And then the big one we went to, this is critical, we went to a museum where you can actually see Jerusalem in the day of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, this is critical because you can kind of sense it now. Uh, there's the homes that people lived in, and there's the temple. Uh, but what most people don't realize, next slide, uh, we have this uh, Im, you know, Im, Im, image of Christ being crucified on this hill outside of uh, you know, Jerusalem and all that. Uh, but if you see that road that's going through uh, the community there, right there, where the, yeah, there you go. Uh, that's the likely place where the two thieves and Jesus were actually uh, put up on the cross. And, and it, it makes sense because they had signs and they want people to see and know, you know, the Romans want them to know who's in charge and you can sense this. So we sing the old rugged cross, you know, on a hill far away, but don't forget on a hill far away from us is Jerusalem. Uh, we get too, maybe too finite. But that's, uh, and it makes a lot of sense with the signs and everything that was put on the cross with Jesus. Yeah, and where that road is, that's actually where that garden tomb is at. Yes. Right where he was born, yeah, where we went to visit. So, yeah. And so that, that kind of made, it put everything in perspective, and I think they did it on intentionally, where you can start putting the story together. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, uh, there you go, day 10, uh, homeward bound. Oh, we definitely went over. <laughs> uh, but, um, uh, and of course, we flew back. And the jet lag, you, if you connected with me last Sunday, I was a zombie. And so, there you have it. Uh, we only have a couple minutes left. Questions, thoughts, tomatoes? Did I touch the wall? No, I refused to, <laughs> to be honest with you. I touched Jesus, I did have a prayer there. <laughs> okay, And I, I'm not here to condemn him, but it's not my stuff. Uh, Harvey. You know, you see these sites and, and they are significant, but but they're just a representation of of uh, of our faith, right? These these aren't the things that we go and we worship the actual like just the two sites of where the possible places where he was buried. They they're they're neat and they're cool, but that's not what God wants us to remember. What does he want us to remember? That he's no longer in it. That he's risen. Right? Yeah, for me, it was not a life-changing mm -hmm. trip. It was a life-giving trip, though. Yep. If that makes sense. Where you have the literal places. We've got to be careful with the literal things because we have to touch the wall. We have to see it. But that's going against our faith, isn't it? Uh, so for me, it was being in the synagogue where we truly believe where Jesus preached, of course, being a preacher. Uh, and of course, on the Sea of Galilee, uh, that's just my heart, uh, you know, love to fish and just imagining Jesus walking on the water in the storm. So that would be the two places that were most significant for me. But again, uh, you know, it was a, it was a, a life giving trip and I'm so uh, thrilled I went. But it did. It just brought it just brought me closer to God in the sense of how important it is uh, to be loving and to be generous with that love uh, where we truly get to then, as we've been talking about. Uh, we get to share our light because that's the true faith. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, so literal things came together with the figurative or the meaningful things, and then it gave you a better, stronger perspective so you can understand the integrity of the faith better, both in, in the literal side and in the figurative side, which is known as integrity. So that, that was it. So with that, Matt, it's all yours, right? Thank you. Uh, we went over, but I think we can...
adjust.